Okay? Is the government spending more money or saving more money? We looked at other things in the economy like labor cost, labor cost and productivity. We looked at the current account. Okay? We looked at uh, many different things which affect the price of the government bond. Okay? It's going to affect the supply and demand of the government bonds. So we decided that there would be more demand for German government bonds, the price would go down, and the, sorry, the, price, the interest rate would go down, but the price of the bond would go up. And we decided that in Greece there would be less demand for the Greek bonds. So the interest rate would go up and the price of the bond would go down. So we should understand about the price of the government bonds. So final subject we're going to talk about is currency crisis. So we already briefly looked at, when we talked about the balance of payments, we looked at Thailand, right? When we talked about uh, the European bond, government bonds, we, looked, we also mentioned the European crisis. So we've already mentioned a couple of crises in the class, right? But we're going to look at it in more detail. So this guy is the expert on currency crisis. Do you know him? What's his name? So he has a blog on the New York Times, which you can read if you want, right? But basically, he's do, he did a lot of research about currency crisis. So we we're going to look at his research or his idea about currency crisis. Okay? Uh, so we have some models for currency crises: the simple model, the canonical model, then more sophisticated model, and then we're going to talk about psychology because we can't talk about crisis without talking about psychology. Okay? So, just generally, pressure on the currency comes because of an investor lack of confidence. So the markets perceive, do you understand perceive? Perception. Is perception the same as reality? Is people's perception the same as reality? No. No, that's just what people think. Okay? Who are we talking about when we talk about the markets? What are we talking about when we talk about the markets? Are we talking about supermarkets? Hmm? Are we talking about the market in Dongdaemun? No. When we, talk, when we say the markets, what do we mean? Pokemon. So here we're talking about investors, right? Investors. So we're talking about the markets. So we're talking about buying and selling. Right? People is buying and selling, right? In the market we have people buying and selling, but they're not buying and selling vegetables and fish and eggs, right? They are buying and selling currency, stocks, bonds, right? So the investors, we're talking about the people, they are called up the market, we're going to refer to them as the markets or investors who are buying these things. So these days we have very global financial markets. So where are the investors from? Where are the investors from? What country are they from? All over the world. We know one of them, like George Soros, we mentioned before. So George Soros has a fund. Do you understand the fund? Yes. Is that all George Soros' own money? No, where does the fund get the money from? Or investors. Investors, where are the investors from? All over the world. Who can we have? Rich people. Okay? Pension funds. Who's a rich person? Give me an example of a rich person. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Kim Sung Young. <laughs> Korea. Right? Kim Sung Young. Which is better for him? To try to invest the money by himself or give his money to George Soros? George Soros. Right? So the rich people give their money to the fund manager. Right? Pension funds. You save your money in the pension. The Korean government invests. They can invest in some fund too, right? Oil. Oil rich countries. Sovereign wealth, sovereign wealth funds. Governments have a lot of savings, right? Sovereign wealth funds. So all of these people are looking for a place to invest their money. So they invest in different countries around the world. They buy stocks, they buy bonds, they buy currencies. They get a return. 
Okay, so this is what we're talking about with the markets. Do you understand? Yes? And so important people in this is fund managers. Fund managers, money managers. They're managing the money for other people. Do you want to be a fund manager? No. Why not? If you take just 1% of this, you're going to be very rich. Fund manager is quite a wealthy job, well paid job. You don't want to do fund management? Yes. Why not? Very hard to job. A lot of pressure. But you still get 1% whether you lose money or you make money. <laughs> right? In the financial crisis, the fund went down by 50%. Do you think the fund manager got paid, didn't get any salary? Or still got a very high salary? Still got a very high salary, even though his fund or her fund went down 50%. Right? Do you understand? Do, do you agree with that system? Fund managers say, anyway, there's nothing we could do, just all the stock market went down. What can we do? You have to pay us anyway, right? It'll come back up. They say, don't worry, it'll come back up again, right? You have to leave your money for a long time, right? So, uh, anyway, fund managers, markets, buying and selling. So the markets think there is some problem in the nation's policy. <coughs> so let's, then <coughs> they don't buy the stocks, they sell their stock, they sell their bond, they sell their currencies, right? So here is the first model of the crisis we've looked at in uh, maybe Thailand, right? The central bank tries to fix the exchange rate by buying and selling currencies. We talked about that before in the class, okay? The fixed exchange rate, the government controls the supply and demand of the currency to fix the price. If a currency is constantly weakening and the bank continues to try to stabilize the price, it's going to sell all its reserves, other currencies and gold. So we talked about that in the case of Thailand, we saw that, right? So Thailand wants to fix, let's say, four baht to one dollar, okay? So everybody is now selling, the markets, markets are selling the baht, okay? They're selling Thai stocks and bonds. So if they're selling Thai stocks and bonds, they're also selling the baht, okay? So Thailand is in a fixed exchange rate. Okay, so what does the central bank to do need to do? If everybody is selling the Thai baht, what does the Thai central bank do? It wants to keep the fixed exchange rate, but everybody is selling the baht. So what is the, are you going to do if you're in the Thai central bank? Buy the baht, right? Everybody is selling. It's going to get weaker to five, six, seven. So we have to create demand to keep it even. So what are we going to use the, to buy the bat? Bananas, Thailand has a lot of bananas. Hmm? Foreign reserves, right? We're going to buy the bat, so we're going to use our reserves. Do we have unlimited reserves? No. Can we print US dollars in Thailand? No. Do we have a US dollar printing press? No, maybe they should buy one, right? and print the US dollars. But they have, they use up all their reserves. Then they're, can they, can they continue to stabilize the exchange rate after all their reserves are gone? No, right? So speculators are going to sell the currency before the reserves are finished. Are the speculators going to wait until the very end and then start to sell the currency? No, they can see the trend, right? Thai's reserves is getting very low. Okay, I don't think they can hold this. So I'm going to sell the Thai bat, get a loan of the Thai bat, and sell the Thai bat. Okay? When the Thai bat gets very weak, I'm going to make a profit. Okay? It's easier to pay back the loan. We talked about that before. So the speculators come in here. So when the reserves fall to some critical level, there may be an attack, an attack by the speculators. So this attack means the speculators are trying to force the country to leave the fixed exchange rate. Okay? They are consciously attacking the country to try to force them to leave, to use up all their reserves and leave the fixed exchange rate. So here, this cause of the crisis is 
problem in the economy, increasing budget deficits, and the fixed exchange rate. Fixed exchange rate is not helping. If the central bank has a lot of large reserves, it should be okay. All right? So currently, Thai, Hong Kong and Saudi Arabia have fixed exchange rates to the dollars. Okay, are you going to attack Hong Kong if you're a speculator? <coughs> Why not? Where did they get their reserves from? Hmm? Where did Hong Kong get the dollars from? Did they win the lottery? They won the US lottery, got a lot of dollars? No. Where does Hong Kong get the dollars from? Many investors. How does the Hong Kong Central Bank have so many US dollars? Hmm? It has a big financial industry. Yes, people invest in there. Anything else? China. Trade. Hong Kong does a lot of trade with the US. So it gets a lot of US dollars. So if we have large reserves, it should be okay. So we can look at the Asian countries. Nowadays, Korea has quite high reserves. Okay, after the crisis, now they have a higher reserves because in the, they had that problem in the crisis. So then there is the second generation model. So this is the simplest one. This is a simple one. Do you understand this model? So explain this to your partner. Explain this, cri this type of crisis to your partner. Okay, you can use, we can talk about Thailand. Okay? So explain this crisis to your partner. This is the first type of model, a model of a crisis that happened in Thailand. So explain the Thai crisis to your partner. What happens first and second and third? Okay, uh, E Changi? Yes. Um, this problem is the spectral rate wants the country's reserve output. Reserve are all 
use. This means uh, they don't depend, a country depend to their currency, fixed currency, fixed exchange rate currency. So, uh, the central bank uh, tried to change the new, new rule uh, if the fixed rate change currency uh, floating rate or uh, they print their money but this is the only use USA so uh, they are the government is the moratorium we we'll start at the start what's the problem what's the first problem no what's the first problem their currency doesn't get weaker to start, that's at the very end. They're in a fixed exchange rate. So what's the first problem? Speculators, do, does a lion attack a healthy zebra or the zebra which is injured? Injured. Injured zebra. So the speculators are not the first step. What's the first step? Country is take to fixed exchange rate. Right, so we have a fixed exchange rate. Fixed exchange rate. Okay, what's the next one? Uh, second is uh, their policy is constantly weakness. What is weak? Maybe yeah. not currency, another word. What's weak? Hmm? Exports, more generally, maybe not just the exports. Trade, more generally? More generally? Not just trade? Hmm? What's more general than trade? Economy. They have a weak economy or bad policy. Okay, do you understand? Bad policy. Do you understand bad policy? Yes. It could be trade, it could be another area. So what happens next? Trying to stabilize the price to. Yeah, so what happens before that? Mm. Many people think uh, their currency is weak. Yes, so people think that the, cur the investors lose confidence, right? Weak economy, bad policy. There is investor lack of confidence. You understand? Investors lose confidence. And instead of saying the currency gets weaker because it's in effect exchange rate, we can say pressure. There is pressure on the currency. Do you understand pressure? Yes, sir. Pressure on currency because the investors lose confidence. Okay, then what happens next? They sell in their currency. Who sells their who sells what currency? Before that, hmm? there's pressure on the currency. What happens next? Currency is weak. Central. What does the central bank do? Buying their currency. Central bank buys their currency and sells dollars. Hmm? And sells reserves. And then what happens next? What happens next? So the polygon reserves of central bank will be bottom. Not yet, not the bottom yet. <laughs> something you were trying to say a few times. Something you tried for number two, number three, and number four. Try again for number five. I will try. Crazy. Why didn't you say speculators this time? You got refused too many times? Speculators, right? What is specu speculators smell blood? Do you understand to smell blood? Yes. The lion smells blood of the zebra that's injured. Okay? So they're going to attack. Okay? Then what happens next? Currency is weaker. So we get to the bottom, right? No reserves. No reserves left. Currency. 
suddenly gets very weak, right? Yes. We have currency crisis. Okay. Do you understand those steps? Yes. Okay. So explain again to your partner what happens in this type of crisis. What happened with Thailand? <coughs> so discuss with your partner again. <laughs> Briefly, what happens in this currency crisis? The simple, this is the first model. The first model of currency crisis, what happens? Explain. So what happens first? What happens next? What happens next? So tell me like this, first, then, 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 finally, okay? So what happens first? <coughs> Do you know? You, you, Gyun Ho, not present. Uh, jo Ryo Myung. Yes. Yes. Can you tell me? So we don't. I don't like the word weaker currency. Currency is fixed until here, until the very end. Weak economy. Yes, weak economy. Weak economy and uh, the investor uh, don't have confidence. Yes. So they, so they will <coughs> selling their currency. Uh, sell, selling currency. Yes. So. gets very weak suddenly overnight right so any question about the first model no so then looks at let's look at the second model a little bit more complicated because we we include the interest rates and monetary policy okay so central banks 
have other tools other than the exchange market intervention to defend the exchange rate, including in particular the ability to tighten monetary policy by increasing exchange rates. Okay, so we saw this in the UK. So another way to here, we here we're buying our currency and selling reserves, right? Another way is we can add in here increase interest rates. Okay? If we increase the interest rates, what's that doing? Hmm? Yes, people should increase if we increase the interest rate, we should get more demand for our currency. Okay? People increase their savings, increase demand for currency. Okay? And also decrease supply because if we have a high interest rate, it's harder to take the loan. Right? Do you understand? Is it speculators, the way they do this is they get a loan of the currency and then sell it. But if we make a very high interest rate, then the speculators might think, no, that's too much, too high. I'm not going to get a loan at that interest rate. Okay? So we increase the interest rate is another tool we have. Does everybody understand that? Increasing the interest rate, increase the demand for our currency. If you can get 20% in the bond, maybe you're going to buy the bond, right? It's a very high interest rate. Okay? If the interest rate is 30%, maybe you'll say, I'm not going to get a loan. Okay? So supply is decreased. So... <coughs> In this model, we have to look at, maybe the government doesn't run out of their reserves, right? But there's a reason why the government would like to leave its fixed exchange rate. And there is a reason why the government would like to keep its fixed exchange rate. Okay? So, can you remember, we talked about the advantages of the fixed exchange rate. Okay? What is the advantage of the fixed exchange rate? talked about before. Why do we want to stay? Why do we have a fixed exchange rate? Trade. Okay? Any, any other advantage? More stable. Stability. Trade. Any other advantage? Credibility. Right? So we have stability, trade. Stability helps to trade and helps credibility. Okay? Why do we want to leave the exchange rate? What's the disadvantage of the exchange rate? Fixed exchange rate. Hmm? We, we are we, more chance of a speculative attack, right? Any other reason to leave? Uh, imbalance of payments, that we're, we have a current account deficit. So we're under pressure, right? We're under pressure here. We could be under pressure, but any other reason why we would prefer to to leave the fixed exchange rate? Yes, so monetary autonomy. So we can do our own we can make our own interest rate and monetary policy. Okay? Very important for our country in the crisis time. So, what this model says is that when the reason for leaving the fixed exchange rate increases, maybe the country might leave the fixed exchange rate. Okay? So, this is the case of the UK and currently the case with Greece. If the reasons for Greece to leave the euro get very strong, so Greece thinks that it's a big advantage to have monetary autonomy, then they might leave the euro, right? And, however, if they think trade and stability is important, more important, they stay in the euro, okay? But in Greece's case, we also saw there's political. Credibility is also related to political reasons, right? Politically, Greece wants to be part of the euro area, even though economically, it might be worse. Even politically, they might decide we want to be friends with those countries. Do you understand? We want to have a good relationship. We want to be credible. So, reason why the government would like to leave. So, if we 
have a lot of debt, we, the inflation will help us. Do you understand? So we can inflate away our debt. So here we can also put in easier to pay back debt. If the debt is in our currency. So that's a key point. So if Greece was to leave the euro, the big problem for Greece is that its debt is in euros. So if the drachma gets weaker, it's going to be harder to pay back the debt. Okay? So what Noriel Rubini suggests that Greece should do is change all their euro debts to drachma. Right? But that's kind of illegal. It's like defaulting, basically. Right? Defaulting on their debt. Saying, I'm changing your bond from euros to drachma. Here you go. Here's the drachma. That's before before you change the exchange rate. Then when you change the exchange rate, the drachma is going to get much weaker. Easy to pay back the debt. Do you understand? Yes. If the debt is in our own currency, inflation. So the UK has this advantage, right? The British pound is important currency. So the <coughs> UK's, a lot of their debt was in pounds. Okay? So if we leave the fixed exchange rate and make our currency very weak, that's bad news for the people who lent us money. Do you understand the idea? Inflation is very high in the UK. It's easier for the UK to pay back. Another problem, the, co the country suffers from unemployment. Greece has 30% unemployment, okay? The UK had 16% unemployment in 1992. In Korea these days it's 3 or 4%, right? So they want to have a different monetary policy, okay? So Britain had this problem twice. The gold standard was a fixed, every currency was fixed to gold in 1931. Britain was the first country to leave the gold standard because of unemployment problem. And Britain also left the first country to leave the ERM in 1992. Okay? What do you think about Britain? They don't really care about their credibility, right? They're the, usually the first country to leave. Then the other countries might follow. Okay? Britain not worried about credibility. Okay? Britain more worried about unemployment, their own situation. Maybe because Britain is an island, right? It's separated from the other countries, so maybe it feels it doesn't need the other countries that much. Okay? Not that worried about the credibility and relationship. Okay? So, if we have high unemployment, we want to print a lot of money, decrease the interest rate. We already talked about that, how that is going to help unemployment. Okay? People will have more money to spend at the end of the month. Companies will take more loans. We should understand that that reason. <coughs> so, why would we like to keep the <coughs> exchange rate? We already mentioned trade and national pride and international cooperation. So credibility. Okay? So, <coughs> we don't want to look bad. So, if we want to keep the fixed rate, first we increase the interest rates. But you can imagine the problem. If we increase the interest rate to increase the demand for our currency, that's going to cause a big problem for the economy. Okay, the government, it's more expensive for the government to lend money. The government is paying higher interest rate to investors, right? Companies, the interest rate in the UK went from five, say 5% to 16%, right? Imagine you're a company. Are you going to expand with 16% price for the loan? Or not expand? No. Are you going to get a loan if it costs 16%? No, it's too expensive, right? So there's this problem for the companies. It's going to depress, put down the growth, and put down the employment. Even worse unemployment. Okay? So the crisis in the first place is caused by government policies and is driven by this economic fundamental. So governments always like to jump to here. Governments want to skip all of this and come here and blame the speculators, right? Politician on the TV will say, oh, the speculators are causing all these problems. Is that true? Hmm? Do you believe the politicians? No. Everything the politician says is true? No. 100%? No. No, right? They're politicians. They want you to vote for them in the next election. So they're not going to say, it was my fault, I made bad policy, and we have a weak economy, right? 
they're going to say, oh, the speculators, they're causing all the problems. But usually the crisis is caused, by, firstly, by the bad government policy. And we saw in, for example, in Greece, they have some problem because of labor cost, right? Increased labor cost, lower competitiveness, lower productivity. Their government was spending too much money. Fiscal deficit, right? Their government was, uh, <coughs> they don't have a current account surplus, they have a current account deficit, okay? So we have, first we have those kind of problems. So, uh, <coughs> Then, the reasons, this reason is bigger than this reason, then we're going to leave. Okay, do you understand this second model? The second model, we're talking about the reasons. This is reasons. Okay, reasons to stay or reasons to leave. Okay, which reason is bigger decides that we're going to stay or leave. Okay, we are going to make the decision in this case. The UK didn't finish their reserves. The UK didn't get to here. Okay? This was the case in Thailand, right? They got UK got to step five. The speculators were attacking. Okay? And then step six is going to come out here. Is just reasons to leave. Reasons to leave is very high. Do you understand? Because of high unemployment. The high interest rate is causing problem in the economy. So we have high unemployment, so now we have a big reason to leave, so we decide to leave. Okay. So discuss with your partner about the second model. Okay, a little bit more complicated model, right? It starts the same. Here we go a little bit, add, add something else, and it goes to here. Okay? So this is the case of the UK. So discuss this model with your partner. What happens in the second model of the crisis? Well, second generation model in the UK. Would also be the case for Greece. If Greece were to leave the Euro, this would also be the case. Second model, slightly different than the first model. So what happened? Tell me first, then, then. So like she explained, right?
Okay, so for example, in the United Kingdom, the people was on the streets demonstrating. Do you understand? Unemployment was very high, so people was demonstrating to the government. The unemployment is too high. Okay, we have to do something. So the reason to leave start to get stronger. Okay, we have we can keep our credibility with the other countries, stable for trade, but. Nowadays, people don't have jobs, and they're all demonstrating. So this one starts to get stronger and stronger, okay? And then they leave. So the interest rate can make the economy worse, right? Increasing the interest rate, we, we missed just one point here. Increasing the interest rate is going to slow down the economy, make it worse, right? Do you understand? So we get even worse economy here because of increasing the interest rate. So maybe it can't hold out. Okay, so this is the question for Greece at the moment. Okay, Greece has a very high unemployment. In my opinion, if, if a country, another country had that high unemployment, they would probably leave, right? Uh, but Spain also has very high unemployment. So the question is, when is the reason to leave going to be more than the reason to stay for Spain and for Greece, right? They have strong reason to stay for credibility and trade and so on, but if Nowadays they're doing some reform, gay, gay hoc, reform, supply side reform. If the reform is successful and the unemployment goes down, then it will be okay, right? But if the reform is not successful and the unemployment stays the same or gets higher, then maybe the reason to leave will get big, bigger for Spain and Greece, do you understand? Yeah. Then it may be that they will decide to leave the euro fixed exchange rate system, okay, which could cause some uh, contagion and other problem in the world, global economy, right? Do you think that Greece and Spain will leave the euro or not? No, the euro is the more credibility they are struggling. You think the credibility is more important reason to stay is more, more so strong? But unemployment rate is very high, around 30%. This is the one in three people don't have a job, or one in four people don't have a job who want to get a job. They report they are Policy change, policy curve, uh, policy curve, uh, their employment, employment change, uh, and they raise, raise their rich, rich uh, tax 